Yeah, that really. Thank you. That really hit me out of nowhere. We are. I, I was. I was very, very impressed. <laughs> <laughs> we are back. We're doing it again for the eighth time here on the reset button. First of all, I want to give a shout out to all you guys on social media, Facebook, Twitter, wherever you guys have a way of checking us out. Thank you for all the feedback we've been getting. Really appreciate it. Um, and we definitely. This takes time out of our lives to do it to see that people are enjoying it. That means a lot, so thank you. We'll keep trying to do up to your what you like, I guess. But we're just two guys. Tannen, like I said, episode eight. Follow us on Twitter, me at the Habeki TMD and Tannen at O Tannen's Bum. But real quick, fella, it's been a week since we talked about the Switch. I'm Nintendoed out since last week, man. I really am. Yeah, it's you know? it's it's to a point where I I. I don't really even want to think about Nintendo too much. It's it's the same as the inauguration. I just don't want to think about it anymore. I don't want to hear about it. Yes. Like yeah. <laughs> well, we've had a we've had a pattern this tail end of the year into the new year to have like episodes on like big bigger type days like Christmas Eve and today the inauguration. So there you have it. Um, Donald Trump was inaugurated today. Take it or leave it. Your opinion on it. Pretty newsworthy day though. Uh, I hope everyone um, that did go to DC, you, you were safe, you were smart, you didn't think like an idiot, honestly. And that's the short and skinny of it for me. Um, but yeah, it's episode yeah. eight. Let's, let's talk about feel good, nerdy, fun stuff, Tannen. Yep, the things that we like to talk about. I know you um, had a you know, busy ass work week, probably. But did you find any time to to fit some gaming into your schedule this week? I did. I played, of course, our game of the week. Um, also, I uh, got around to finally playing uh, Wind Waker HD. Now that I'm so excited about Breath of the Wild, I went and pop that in. It is a really beautiful game. Um, I, I have played it on GameCube, of course, and you know, really enjoyed it on the GameCube. But this just it, it does look amazing. I, you know, when that game first came out, I was not a fan of the shell shading and the direction they were going in. But um, like the Wii U definitely makes it look very good, and uh, it's very sleek. Uh, another game that I got into, uh, speaking of HD remakes, and that seems to have been my week. Uh, for you know, uh, one of the birthday presents I had yet to open up was um, Return to Arkham, which is you know the Arkham City and, and Arkham Asylum remastered. I saw you. And were I played playing. Arkham Asylum. Um, dude, it it's it really. I'm I'm into it. It's like playing, you know, the game over again, but just a lot better. Like I am really digging it. I think it just I, it definitely looks beautiful. So. I'd check it out definitely. Speaking of PS4 stuff, guys. Also, uh, if you're listening to this um, in the next couple of days, there's a crazy flash sale going on. So Sleeping Dogs is like five bucks, and there's a bunch of pretty yeah. Cool well, it's actually not just that. I'm I'm on there as we speak because uh, I I think I want to buy some stuff. You got to get an Edward. And help. It's fun. Well, right now I'm actually I'm looking at a uh, Skull Girls Encore two, uh, uh, second Encore. That was a nice little two D fighter um, that we played when I came to your house that night. Well, now I'm going to have the second Encore, so. Oh. We'll have fun with that. I'm also eyeballing Child of Light. There's there's a few really good ones on here. I mean, there's a there's just a ton of stuff on here. This is crazy. Every, yeah, you know, every time they come at the end of the list. Hell of a sale this week for Sony fans, definitely. Um, I, I'm not too savvy. Like, I I always forget you have an expo in Tannen. You do have an expo. In, I don't know of any Microsoft sales to plug or anything. Not that I'm getting paid for it or anything, but I just don't know. I don't know if there's anything going on. Probably. Um, not that from what I know. I'm not an Xbox Gold member. Oh. Um, still yet. I, I just play the system. Um, it's primarily right now a glorified 
Netflix unit for us, but I'm going to, I'm going to try to get into it more. I need to, I, I've got it put it back in the bedroom and that's just a stupid spot for it for me. Like I should, I should put it in a, you know, a better spot. Probably. Probably. <laughs> As far as me, I, I got to be honest, after talking about the Switch stuff last week, I dove back into Splatoon. Um, pre- I pretty solidly have played it pretty straight. That, always find time for Overwatch, of course. Uh, not really too much different. Uh, playing some Garden Warfare 2 with the kids, which for a more family-oriented shooter is pretty good. I'm not going to hate on that game. It's pretty fun. for. It doesn't try to be more than what it should be, and that's part of the charm to it, I suppose you could say. You know, I don't know if you. Yeah, actually, I've, I've heard a lot of good things about it. In fact, even today, I had a little kid. I sold that to some kid today, and uh, he was just talking about how much fun it was. So they, they definitely hook you up as far as content. Uh, there's like over 160 characters you can unlock. It's definitely there. That's crazy. Um, Tannen, as far as what's going on with us, though, what's going on? In the gaming world this week, as far as news and whatnot. <laughs> uh, well, not a whole lot. It's just, it seems like this with us every other week. It's I like, know. you know, we get a, a nice big bombshell and then, Drought. you know, I, and then nothing. Um, Little tidbits. I don't know, just some interesting tidbits here and there. Uh, the creator of Deadly Premonition, one of my favorite games uh, ever created, is uh, back from being a monk. And he wants to make more games, which that's pretty awesome. Um, I'd like to see what new direction he goes in after he has now become an official monk. Like, if knows? anything makes you come um, back, it's got to be games, you know. Yeah, right. Why not? Well, especially if you know, I don't know. If, I don't know if you ever played Deadly Premonition, but it was an extremely in-depth game. And that's what I think I liked about it. It was also kind of cheesy. Yeah. Um, in a way, I mean, it was it was primarily based off of Twin Peaks, and if you ever play, you know, watch or I mean, watch Twin Peaks, like it's just I have definitely watched know, Twin but, like, Peaks. Like when people, <laughs> yeah, well, well, I'm just well, you know when people like sometimes like I don't know one of the things like even even in the beginning you're like what am I getting myself into like you know you shoot this ghost and, oh I'm dying like just the <laughs> yeah. it was the purposefully bad voice acting that was placed in that game was was just the whole thing was just awesome and strange and it was it was a whole new kind of experience so right on um speaking of experiences I see Halo War 2s is, is uh yeah H- Halo Wars 2 2 which that <laughs> was uh, originally that was definitely yeah Halo Wars 2s, um, that was definitely a, uh, a game week. that I enjoyed when it originally came out. I didn't actually play so. Halo Wars when it came out. I passed. I passed. So that's all you, Buttercup, on, on how Halo Wars plays and whatnot. I have no time to spend. Uh, uh, yeah. It, it's just, it's one of those real-time strategy games, but with a Halo theme to it. Right. And the gameplay was really cool, you know, and I, I like that kind of stuff. Like, I like Civilization and things like that, so... Me too. Uh, um, you know, it's, it's definitely like the first one was a good game to get into. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else is going on here. Well, I, really, am just, I am for reason. I know I'm being lame. We are like at a simmering point, pretty much. Like when you got the water on, making your tea, and it's simmering, starting to bubble. Resident Evil 7 is dropping next week, and that's really going to be the big one. Uh, I would assume for next week's episode to talk about. Um, yeah, I definitely want to get my hands on it and be able to play it. Did you before. play the demo that came out? Oh, of course. Right. I think everyone probably and had I really, access played it. I really liked it actually. Um it uh it, it's different. I did you know, too, and um, it, different in how what sense though? Because I came away from it like, okay, that was really cool, but I came away from it a little bit worried. Like, is Resident Evil going to fall under that generic horror trope? Let's throw all this. We've talked about this before. Let's throw as many cliches as we can to make it more of a psychological work. Resident Evil was an example of having a perfect balance of action, psychological gore, and it, 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 the good Resident Evil games, I should say, not the uh, the ones that shall not be named or whatever. 
Do you think yeah. it's going to ultimately, at the end of the day, deliver and 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 do what it's always done for the best entries, and that's think outside the well, box see, and take well, it in a direction nobody it, expected? When Resident Evil Four came out on the GameCube, there were a lot of naysayers. They were very doubtful about it, but yet they are the same people that applauded the remake that was leading up to four. That had also come out on the GameCube. Yeah. And um, I loved Resident Evil 4. I absolutely loved it. It it was not the same Resident Evil, but it it seemed like that formula was getting old. They had to do something new. By the time Nemesis came out, I was not that big of a Nemesis fan. I know a lot of people that are huge fans of Nemesis, but I wasn't. Like, you know, we had the first one, we had two, and then three was just, for me, it was a little, uh, just meh. Good rock. And now... Again, well, Code Veronica was that that see that was another one of their experimental things. I was not a, too big of a, of a Code Veronica fan. I actually Resident was, Evil I'm Zero. On that, I'm on that minority that really liked Code Veronica. I well, I, I also think I'm a, I'm a minority that really liked Resident Evil Zero. I really enjoyed that one. I really too. enjoyed that was a remake uh, for the GameCube of the first one. I loved that one. No, 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 no wait, no, Zero wait, yes, I know, yes, it was, but it, was title. it was on the GameCube, right? It wasn't a remake. Yeah, yeah, that was another. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, mixing the shit up. That was, that was another. PS4, that was another one. And the first one is really good though too. And that was. Yeah, well, good. that's just it, that's like a remaster of the GameCube remaster. Though. <laughs> it's like that's what I said they, though. They, like it's the first game, much, you know. Yeah, but um, you know, it, first game is good. Well, I guess then, that's now, what we're trying to say. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then, okay, so we got to four. Four was awesome. Fucking loved four. Oh, yeah. Then five came out. Five was great to play if you had a partner. Good multiplayer. But if you didn't have a partner, fuck Boring that single. game. Yeah, hard. And then player. Resident Evil 6, I did not like Resident Evil 6. I thought it was a shitty game, and I was done with it. I was like, man, Resident Evil's gotten old. And, you know, like, uh, the Raccoon City game came out, and that was, like, still another, you know, failure. Uh, they, they've definitely tried other things in the series to like keep it alive, like Outbreak. I don't know if you ever played that. I did not. That was that was interesting, you know. But without the online stuff, Outbreaks just kind of is what it is. Um, yeah. But now now we're getting back there, going back to like what they looked like look, looked at with Resident Evil Four, and they're going to a new formula. And it's always interesting to see them do these these whole new formulas. And um, I, think, I, I, I honestly think, because it is supposed to be a seventh game, it's not a remake, it's not a reboot. Oh, it's its own This thing. is involving, yeah, it's a certain thing, but it's still involved in the series. This yeah. is still a seventh yeah. game in the series. And they made that very clear. Um, Brand new experience, I and should say, yeah, 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 exactly. What, what, after playing the demo, it, that is what it is. It's a, it's a new experience. Speaking of um, playing the demo, I mean, real just quick, to you, see the go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I was just saying, I'm just anxious to see the the final product. But go ahead. The, do you remember when we were younger at um Lowe's, lo, our local Lowe's, that you could play games in the store like at a kiosk type setup yeah. thing? You remember, like, when yeah, N64 yeah. dropped, that's the first time I ever played N64. This is also the first place I ever, oh, look at this, two birds with one stone, looked and used a plasma TV and played Resident Evil 4 when it was on display at Lowe's. So shout out to Lowe's. Just wanted to Wow. Yeah, Lowe's was the first place that I ever played a Super Nintendo at. Yes. And it was it was great because we were, my dad, we were building the house, so we were at Lowe's a lot. Yep. And I, but at the same time, couldn't afford a Super Nintendo. So I like, there was never a line for it. Yeah. It was the only place that there was never a line for this. I know, this. because it's the last fucking so, place you'd expect it to be. And that's what was beautiful. But it was like, place, it yeah. was like, it was like the guy that came up with Lowe's was like, oh, these poor kids, they're probably so bored. Let's sprinkle this in and cheer them up. It was probably like a Willy Wonka. Yeah, exactly. That came up with Lowe's. Oh, no, you know, it will get to the point. Like, my dad would be like, hey, well, let's just go back and put a Super Nintendo in there. <laughs> And you know I'll what? Back I, in like 15 minutes. I go into Lowe's today as an adult with my own kids, and I know I'm sad because that Willy Wonka creator type guy of Lowe's has passed because there's no longer video games you can play in Lowe's, and they took that away when he passed away. And that sucks. Well, you can't buy video games at Lowe's anymore either. They at least sold the systems. Uh, that was part of the appeal, I think. Oh, buying a new house? 
why don't you get a new TV in a system while you're at it? I mean, it, it was a great combo sale yeah, that they like would do with some of those. A Montgomery Ward slash Lowe's. We're getting way off topic, and it's my fault talking about the park. We are getting way off topic, but yes, shout out <laughs> to Lowe's. There you have it. But yeah, um, Res- Resident Evil 7 is where we were before I fucked it up, Tana, so. Yeah, no, it's, it's fine. Resident Evil 7, though, um, yeah, I, I'm just, I am, I am anxious. And you know, we, we, we've gone through this, this phase where number seven games usually are really fantastic, so. Right. Let's see if uh, if they keep up the tradition to that. And, I don't know. We, you and I kind of oppose on Mega Man 7. I thought it was pretty mediocre, and you thought it was really good. Talked about yeah. it last week. So yeah. that's the iffy 7. But I didn't think that I didn't think that it was necessarily groundbreaking. We didn't we never got into that too much. I, I think Mega Man X was groundbreaking. Seven was just a really good game. Speaking, <laughs> speaking of really good games, um, Yakuza Zero has dropped and it's gotten outstanding reviews. This is a series I've regretted not getting more into because I've only ever played like the second one. I never even played the first one. I'd like to check it out eventually. Know if you play those games, um, I played the one that was free for a little bit, right? Um, uh, well, it was free for download. Um, you know, I wasn't necessarily like disappointed in it, but I never really got the time to get into it. So, and that goes for right. any accusing game, like, I, I mean, like I just, everybody that, I hear from, those, like, like, they love it. Like they say nothing but good things about this series, the le- especially yeah, the last yeah. couple. Of years. It was, yeah, it was a bad. Like I'm not gonna dog on it, you know. But it, you know, I just say it was one of those things. Like I put it on the back burner, and um, that's yeah. just where it's been. Well, speaking of things that should stay on the back burner, Resident Evil to bring it back, I guess to Resident Evil, the final chapter, the last fucking movie, which seems like 34 entries. It, uh, God, how many fucking Resident Evil movies have there been? I'm not a fan, obviously. <laughs> uh, wait, how, how many Resident Evil what? How many, Sorry, you faded out there for a second. How many Resident Evil movies have there been? Like 35? Uh, eight of them? Christ, that beats Police Academy. I don't know, man. I, I think they're I think they are up there in police academy like Rocky status, Ooh. as far as the uh, so much the um, <laughs> franchise goes. Um, hey, just to point out real quick, and I hate to point this out and segue into this real fast, but as I'm shopping on here, uh, Psychonauts is also on sale for three ninety nine, and I'm definitely buying that. Yes, Goat Simulator is like three ninety nine um, too. I saw. Never played that. Yeah, I got that on sale a while ago, though, and that was, uh, I got it on sale for, like, a dollar. Psychonauts. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Psychonauts was a really fun game back in the day, most of. Oh, yeah, no, it's a classic. Um, another game, there's a few, there's just a few games on here that I'm, I'm like, spotting that I'm like, holy crap. Rogue Galaxy. I'm pissed my, about uh, this one. I am yet. pissed. This is one of those sales where you gloss over and you're like, fuck. Rogue Galaxy's five bucks. I paid 20 bucks for it, so stupid me. So if you're a fan oh, yeah, of that I'm game, about to actually pay... I was going to say, I just also added that to my cart. You bastard. <laughs> hey, it's a great game. You got a hell of a deal on it, in all seriousness. Enjoy. Oh, will see... do. I'm going to enjoy Second Knots again. You know, that was a, was a hell of a game. But, the, you know, the Resident Evil movies, I'm not a fan, like I said, Tannen, I'm Almost a hundred percent positive you're not either. Um, I I saw the first one and the first one disappointed me because I was like, "Ooh, Resident Evil, you know, Chris Redfield, and all these all these people <laughs> are going to be in it." And um, no, it didn't happen. So we had, you know, Mia Yovovich, which you know, like at the time when I saw that movie, actually, you know, like I, I you know, I was like, "Oh man, you know, Mia Yovovich is hot. I wonder who she's going to play." And it ended up being like. It was like species or something. Like, you know, lay to me. Like, it was just, it, it had that feel to it. You know what I mean? Like, just, it was like a cheesy action movie. Yeah. And, and something about her being a bioweapon and, and Michelle Rodriguez looking constipated. And, um, <laughs> like every film. And, and, and then, 
<laughs> like, yeah, like every film, like she's really got to poop. She's been trying for years to take that poop. And um, and then, you know, like the movie ended, you know, the only part that I was like, whoa, was the part with the lasers and the lasers are cutting everybody up. Oh, yeah. So the second one, you know, comes out and I'm, I'm disappointed in the first one. Well, the second one comes out and it's like, oh, my God, Jill Valentine is in this movie. So maybe we'll finally yeah. start yeah. having something more like like the games that I played. What? No. What did we get? <laughs> what the fuck did we get, Tannen? <laughs> I don't even know what the hell it was. I know. Like, I still to this day don't know what the hell that was. Man. Um. And and then uh, and then <laughs> I just stopped. I think I think I watched Resident Evil <laughs> Apocalypse once, like to take a nap. I yeah. played on and fell asleep. It woke up till like the ending credits. So I I cannot explain to you what happens in that movie. Yeah, pretty much. And I think that's the third one, right? I don't know, because pretty much the same exact route for me, when they disappointed the hell out of me in two, I was like you, I fell off. This is, falls under the category, if I've ever seen a movie in the franchise after two, it's because I was at somebody else's house and they had it on their TV. Like, that's the only way I would ever see any of the other movies. But I can just tell you from all the trailers I've seen, and I don't really go off feedback a lot, but sometimes you can't help but not. If movies just get bashed, you, it, odds are they're good. Like, Suicide Squad. I know people like Suicide Squad, but I, I, at first, man, I know people shit on it. Then I actually, I went into it positive going to see Suicide Squad. I didn't like it. I should have listened to people now. That's a case of I should have listened. Uh, I, I tried to have fun with that movie. I could have. It just was, the fun wasn't there. But, you know, you know what saved that movie in a way? And he saved it terribly. Will Smith. Like, inadvertently saved it was Will Smith. I was, inadvertently I was, saving it. And it was just Will Smith being Will Smith. Like, it's like, oh, I mean, we have classic Will Smith here, at least. You know, like, thanks for, uh, thanks for that uh, late 90s, early 2000s nostalgia, Will. Wild, wild, <laughs> wild, 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 wild. You know? <laughs> but, yeah, the, the Resident Evil movies, they definitely aren't for us. If they're for you guys, let us know in the comments down below. Maybe you guys fuck, because I know that this, these movies, people, some people love these fucking movies. Like, they go ape shit. I've seen people at the announcement of this one, like, as the last one, I've seen people on social media be like, oh, I'm in tears, I'm so upset. Like, really? Like, these are, like, no. we've said it before off air, we've said it, I'm sure in the past a million times about this franchise, it had the potential to be something so much fucking more, and instead we got a mediocre PG-13 action shitty moves series. And that's all we got. Here's the thing, well, well here's, here's the thing. Most people that like the Resident Evil movies have never played the games. That is also that, very, very from true. From what I've noticed. Yes. And, yes. um... Sock and it's just like, well, you know, it, it, that's the thing. Uh, I don't know. It, it's just like also most people that are fans of The Walking Dead Didn't don't read, read comic books. Yeah, they don't read the comics. Yeah. I mean, you. but I, 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 I know like, people that love both, though. Like, they love the movies and the games. I'm just like, okay. I mean, if you like it, who the fuck am I? Gave, you know? People that gave Batman and Robin a good review. <laughs> Wow, that's pretty... I'm uh, retarded. <laughs> is anything as bad as Batman and Robin? And I've seen Julian Donkey Boy, and I would rather watch Julian Donkey Boy than Batman and Robin. I don't know if anyone's ever seen well, that. Well, Julian Donkey Boy was a way better movie than Batman and Robin. But I think yeah, it's but, definitely uh, an acquired taste a... of a movie, as far as... Like, you and I would definitely... Oh, like you know, I can watch... I, look, I, I can watch... I can watch Batman and Robin though and laugh at it for that factor it is like watching a comedy movie now at this point yeah but those last like, run you know, out it's after just, so many it's times. just a really bad movie i mean you know, hey you know the ice puns ice to see you ice to see you um yes you know Two. i've got i've just i've got a few good i've got a few good memories of seeing that movie in yeah, we theater. talked about it before, you in the movie theater and your brother-in-law yelling just like Arnold and making the whole theater laugh and fading out the movie. That was a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, it was like people people walked up to them and was like, dude, you, you made it worth my ticket. And... <laughs> but is the are these movies worth your ticket, guys? In our opinion, no. So that's our take on the Resident Evil movies. If it's the last one, good, but I... I don't think it's going to be the last one. It's going to come back. You know it's going to be something stupid, a spinoff, something. 
I uh, hopefully if it comes uh, back, it's, it's, it doesn't have anything to do with a character that wasn't even in the games in Alice, and it has like a more like a rated R fucking Resident Evil. If they ever bring it back, please just try, just fucking try. What do you got to lose? You're not gonna lose. You're gonna make mad money off that if they do that. Um. By the way, in the middle of my shopping, I believe that the PS Store just completely crashed because it says that it's not. It's temporarily not available in my country or region. Oh, it's because your PS4 said you should be doing your show and not shopping. <laughs> yeah, I'll talk to you when you're Couldn't done. Couldn't help it. <laughs> Couldn't help it. Yeah. Just look at all these deals. Oh, my God. Look at all these goddamn yeah, deals. You, this is just too good to be true. Now, like, um, Sleeping Dogs is five bucks on here, but, man, it's 17 gigs. <laughs> I got it for six. It's of space. Yeah, it's, but it's three games. It's all the DLC ever and everything. It's worth it. Yeah, it's the ultimate edition. Yeah. It's worth it. Anyway, uh, I think it's time for an ultimate edition break, Dan. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Let's take a break. Let's take a break, Ski. When we come back, it's our game of the week, an old favorite, one of probably both of our favorite games of all time. Uh, it's Konami. one of favorite franchises, too. Dirty fucking pigs. Mike here from the Slam Pigs Podcast, reminding you once again to check us out on Twitter. Whether it be the Slam Pigs Podcast, whether it be me at Mike the Slam Pig, or whether it be our sister show, the Reset Button. Check us out. Also, you can find us on Facebook at the Slam Pigs Podcast or the Reset Button. And as always, make sure you check us out as a whole on Hibiki TMD. Until we see you next time, going going. And we are back, episode 8 of the Reset Button, Tannen. Welcome back, my friend. It is our Game of the Week time. I'm excited for this one. Woo! What is our yeah, Game of the Week, Tannen? Uh, our Game of the Week is one of my most favorite titles of all time. That would be Contra 3, The Alien Wars. Alien on Wars. On SNES. The fucking wars, Tannen. This game... As a kid, yeah. blew my mind, and so it showed me what the SNES and what the 16-bit era in general was capable of. For just right off the bat, that's yeah. one of those games. It was one of those games, too, that it was on display at Kmart when I first played it. And one of the things that got me, you know, as you're running and you're gunning, the dog stops eating the trash to yeah. charge at you. Yeah, he, it, it it was first like, it tricks you, shit. you're like, oh shit, there's a dog, wait, he's in the background. Okay, it's smooth sailing. If you never played it, and then all of a sudden, he's chasing your ass. He's done eating. Yeah. He's had his fill. He's done eating. He's coming after you, because he's possessed by aliens. That feral dog has had enough of your shit. <laughs> <laughs> but Man, anyway, this, Tannen. Uh, this game. Yeah. Uh, you go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> You go ahead. Uh, the, the, this, this game, you know, um, if you had grown up playing, uh, you know, Contra and Super C, you were you were ready for a new Contra game, and this this being the third entry, and and the the graphics in it <clears throat> for its time especially are just purely amazing. Uh, you also you know could dual gun in a way that uh, you know if you held down the first top two buttons, you could somersault. Yes. And go from this great pose of holding both of your guns out, like a true action hero, to somersaulting and launching both of them. Um, and the array of weapons was was just awesome. You had the Heat Seekers, which I think that was the first time in the series you had Heat Seeking weapons, uh, if I'm not correct. I might not be right about that. I'm pretty but sure. But right. also, um, not 100% possible. the engine on it, too, allowed them to throw you an onslaught of enemies. That yeah, was... <laughs> <laughs> so that was ridiculous. Not only that, this this Contra entry in the series, I think it definitely appealed to fans because it didn't stray from what made it Contra, but it added so much goodness, like motorcycle chases, fucking... My God, where do you start with Contra 3? Let, let's be real. I, I, 92, it came out, I'm pretty sure. 
uh, was the year on this one. And like you said, you you played it in Kmart. It was one of the the first year run uh, the SNES in America games we got, and it was definitely mind blowing. I think this is one of the prime examples when we talk about games like sprite work holding up so much better than like a PS One era. Something about sprites just hold up, and this game is still gorgeous. It's still awesome to look at to this day. I definitely noticed that right off the bat. And it's still a challenge. Um, yes, <laughs> you, you can, you can memorize the game to the point where you can choreograph it, but at the end of the day, it's, it's still a challenging game. Um, and just one, one to be dealt with. I mean, and you don't want to stop. You don't want to stop. Yeah. Even if you do get the game over, you want to go back and keep on going at it again to see what you can do right or wrong. And um, one of the big things with me playing it this round, I noticed I have a preference in weapons. Is it, so it does suck. Like, say I have a combination of the spread, spread and the heat seeker. And well, I don't, actually, don't sleep yeah, on the laser the in spread. this game. Honestly, the laser fucks some shit up in Contra 3. Oh, the, the, the laser can destroy a boss really damn quick. Yes. Um. It's very powerful, but when you're going through a level, man, if you have the spread oh, heat yeah. seeker combo, I mean, you're, you're, you're basically you unstoppable. You are open for business. It, well, then I noticed too another game that I did play this week a little bit was Super Star Wars, and it's like they did take that element of giving you different kinds of weapons, including heat seekers, in that game, and that game came out after That's Contra true. Three. That is true. So, so I was just like, oh, wait a second. Look at what they threw in here. Oh, that's sneaky. <laughs> you know what else was sneaky about Contra 3? How deceptively they threw in Mode 7. All of a sudden, it's in your face. Like, it's top down. And you know what? They nailed it. I A lot of people don't like this part. I enjoyed this part of Contra 3. I do. Once you get it down and know what the fuck you're doing, you're good to go. It's, it's fun. It's challenging. Oh. It's rewarding. Super C had the whole top down thing, and it was a little different in that one. A little, little bit different. This yeah. one, I think they perfect. Well, this one, I think they perfected it. Like they took where they were going, and they were like, "We're going to make this good." Whereas, you know, people who are veterans of Super C going into that, and go, oh fuck, top down. Like you know, like you're instantly going to be like, oh, why? But um, no, I love the top down. So it's, it gives you a little maze. It's like just another little challenge, and you got to go through, and of course, destroy all the little alien nests. And, you, know what else, um, you know what else is really I, fun? Riding on missiles. That's really fun in Contra Three. Oh yeah. Oh man, you're just holding on to the missiles. Yes. Oh yeah, you just look so badass. Maybe my favorite part of the whole game. Um, is I don't know. It's such I, a good dude. Game. The stills though, too. The stills that they have every now and then of our action heroes. That are yeah. supposed to be kind of like the storyline that you see. <laughs> this can be laughable. What's what else is laughable? But, um, I think I think I'm not. I'm pretty sure this is true. Like the the original names of the Contra guys from the NES games was like Lance and like Billy or something, and they changed yeah, this yeah. to something like Jimbo and something else. But they were ridiculous. But it was the same guys. It's the different localizations of games like this back in the day were. If you appreciate stuff like this, it's hilarious. But another thing that's weird, they did, like in the original Contra, they changed the name to the Red Falcon for the U.S. localization. They did this again to the same name in the SNES version. I thought that was weird. It may be lazy a little bit, honestly. But still fun. Super fun. Yeah. It's super fun. It, this this it's game super fun definitely game. puts the super in Nintendo. See what I did there? Oh, yeah. And you know what? They didn't call it Super Contra. They did not. Because see, Super C had already been made. They just yep. called it Contra 3, The Alien Wars. Whereas this was during a time, though, kids, where everything was super something on the Super Nintendo. Even Castlevania. Not even Castlevania. The first one could escape the Super moniker. The second one did, but the second one kind of sucks. I don't really like it. But, yeah. <sighs> Dracula X, that is. It's so hard and unfair. It's gorgeous. It's good. I mean, it's a port. It's a watered down port of Ron. That's a different topic. That's Castlevania. Let's go back. I gotta go to Castlevania all the time. I gotta work on that shit, Tanner. I love Castlevania. I can't help it. But I do yeah, love Contra. Okay. I do love fucking Contra. You know what's weird, Tanner, about the um, the mini NES mini is that they put Super C on there, and not the original Contra. I thought that was a really odd choice. Yeah, I saw that on the list. I uh, really that odd. was a little bit of a shocker. 
But, you know, I think they were just trying to get their titles or their hands on whatever title they could. Especially from Kenobi. And they probably eat him. Take what they get. Yeah. And they probably get eat him and emo it a little bit, you know. Well, speak, right. Speaking of Konami, the new Bomberman game. Oh, by the way, that was our game of the week. Sorry, Tannen. I was going to mention the new Bomberman yeah. game is a launch title, and that was bought out by Konami, bought out Hudson, and all that bullshit. It's weird Konami is so open to be a launch title, but maybe the Pachinko business isn't working out for Konami after all. They need a little uh, boost. They're gambling. Well, it, no matter what, you're going to make money off of off of making slots, but if you're going to buy out other companies, other gaming companies, you better... Keep on making fucking video games then, because I don't think, you know, oh, we have Hudson Soft, well, let's make more slot machines. And not just, like, um, me- weird Metal Gear survival fucking games that are pissing off your Metal Gear fan base. I don't know. That was our game of the week, and we have a request this week, Tannen, from one of the listeners, I believe. On the oh, YouTube. okay. On the YouTube. Yeah, so, so from, let me look here uh, real quick. So what does, what does the YouTubes have to say? I know the it? game, but I just want to get who gave us the question right, so I don't insult. It's from Mary Hatcher, Tan. The lovely Mary Hatcher gives us feedback on Slam Picks Podcast, is a, is a big fan of Big DMD. Thank you, Mary, for your, I kind of want to thank you. She's obviously a listener because she heard our debate a week or two ago about Super Mario Brothers 2. Doki Doki Panic, but Super Mario Brothers 2 uh-huh. for the NES. And she has requested... We go at it this week, Super Mario Brothers. Oh no, yeah, you know what? I can go ahead and do that blindfolded thing if you want me to. It's Toad. Cool. On the ice level. Yes. Put your money where your little mouth is, Tannen. Let's see you do it. No, I'm I just going... beat it. I'll, I'll be beat good. It. I'll... I'll beat it, and then I'll be like, I- I- I'll beat it. Be like, <laughs> took me like four hours. <laughs> where you at, Travis? I will be back. I mean, you know, I also I also know where all the warp zones are, and I, I don't really consider that cheating, consider I beat that game so many damn times. I'll be back on, like, World <laughs> 5, cussing at the platforming on flying shy guys. I'm like, fuck! Fuck that or ice, because fuck. Fuck. A lot of fucks, but... You know, you know what levels all the desert levels always bothered me in that one. I got those. Th- I have those on lockdown. Those don't give me. The- it's when I get to the ice and I get to like the airborne shit. I'm like, man, this game is slippery. This is not. I'd rather play. I was hoping. I was gonna say Mary meant the lost level Super Mario Brothers too, but I'm assuming she means the the big lie, the yeah. Doki Doki Panic. That's what she means, man. Mm-hmm. Which is, which is fine by me. At least you didn't say, hey, play Doki Doki Panic. That is that is yeah. a very good fucking point, because you cannot even run in Doki Doki Panic. As we've addressed. Nope. That's game of the week, Tannen. It's over. <laughs> Count your threes in the books. I love it. Guys, if you have... Real quick, I wanted to say uh, on the Contra talk, Tannen. Contra Hardcore for Sega Genesis. They may have taken it a little too far with the difficulty for... I don't hate that game, but I don't like it nearly as much as Contra 3, because I just think it's really unfair. Well, the, uh, there was that Contra game for the PS2 also that was extremely yes. hard. Yes. Very good. And Contra a 4. really good fucking game. Yes. Um, but, oh my god. Yes. Like, that was just, like, what the hell? It was random. Like, I feel like they were like, oh, cool, we can finally do a random engine with half of this shit. And the worst say. Contra game I've ever played... PS1. It was Contra 3D. Yeah, Contra 3 on the PS1. Yes, that was... I played the shit out of it, man. I, I, no, I just... I, you know what? I really tried with that one. I tried... I tried so hard. And, um... Oracle is eating my, uh... It's kind of like when they, uh... Thank they you. did the same thing with Street Fighter on PSX, PS1, where they tried to take it to 3D with, like, EX. And I tried, too, but I just... I couldn't. And I tried a little bit with Contra on PSX. I was like, man, fuck this. It's not very good. I'm well, very vulgar another, this week. Contra another, makes me vulgar. There's, there's another Contra. Well, you know, it's all out war, man. It it's is. aliens. Get in the truck. But, um, but uh, there was another Contra game on a uh, PS1 that I heard wasn't that bad, but I've never played it. Um, but the Contra 3D one was the one that I earned. The other one is and a side I bought it. Yes. It's yeah. More back but the basics. 3D one, though, was like... I really tried, man. Like, I got really far into it. And I really, really wanted to like it. <laughs> man, 
I would say the, the PS1, N64 is that era of just those games with, like, I tried. Because it's so much changed. It was such a jump. And so many franchises. Look, look what happened to fucking Bugsy. In our opinion, look what happened to Mega Man. That game sucks. Mega Man Legends, come at us, guys. Come at both of us. We have our weapons. We're ready to go. Mega Man Legends yeah, sucks. It sucks. I don't know why you people I like mean, that if you're, game. If, if you're a Mega Man collector and you have that as part of your collection, I can like, see that. For you, you know? I, I can see having but it to have it. You can't, you can't sit back and tell me no. that it's a good fucking game just because you own it. Because you're lying. You're trying. You're still trying to this day to enjoy that game. And you need to hit your reset button and just let go. I feel like I want to buy two copies just to be a prick so I can burn one and film it for the channel. But, that's, no, but then, that but then at the end of the day, I'd feel like a prick because somebody could have had that game that loved it. And I wouldn't do that. You know what I mean? Like, like I hate it when people like burn a game or yes. destroy it, like here, on purpose oh, ooh, just to do it. Ooh, here is a good one. Thank you, Tanner. For get, I wanted to talk about this this week, and I forgot. I thought about it earlier in the week. I, just, I, I, I did not to cut you off, but I feel like that's up there with book burning. That's yes. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, I know that. Like that's where I'm going with this. I wanted to get your thoughts because I see this on Twitter all the time, and people think I gotta admit it looks cool when people mod old NESs. They paint them up. They make them look like a certain game. They change them. I, I, it just rubs me the wrong way. I'm like, you shouldn't. Because, I mean, in 30 years, the original, I don't know. It's going to be so, what's the word I'm looking for? Just don't do that, in my opinion. Like, I, I get what you're trying to do. Just curious, it's like an old car. It's like an old car. Yeah. In a way. You know, it's like, it's like having an old car. I get way too worked up over nerd yeah. shit sometimes. I really do. Yeah, you know, it's okay. It's all right. Real it in a you know, it's just, you know, at first for a while it was cool. Like, I remember when, like, the mint toaster came out. And I was like, wow. Yeah. Would you look well, at that? And, you know, there's, you know, like, a lot of those, but a lot of those things, too, like, when people take those, a lot of them. A, a take, mint toaster, people are usually taking from a, a, an unrepairable NES and, like, making something new. Not that. I mean, like, a perfectly yeah. fine NES. And just doll it up and paint it like I saw the one I'm talking about specifically, and it wasn't even based on a good game. It was, and they had the game beside it in box, of course, complete in box because of the collection, dude. You know, whatever. Turtles one for the NES, and they painted it green and put like a shell on it. I'm like, I'm just like, man, I could have had that NES, and it would have been gray. I gotta admit though, speaking of mods, the coolest one I've ever seen. I don't know if you've ever played Journey to Silius on NES. It was a phenomenal mod of a journey to silly so it, they do look cool like i said i just i'm a purist i'm a fucking purist i can't i'm a cranky old man i can't help it no, if, it ain't, if it ain't broke don't fucking fix it if it's in mint what the hell are you doing why don't i just you know why don't i just take an original uh you know the first action comics with superman and um uh, i'll just you know start drawing stick figures all over it because yeah. that's how I feel. I'm going to go upstairs. Yeah, like, what the fuck? Like, I'm going to go upstairs, Tan, and I'm going to get my six string, and I'm going to let my daughter paint fucking Minecraft characters on it with glitter. <laughs> you know? There you have it. Best, best mod ever. Man, I feel relieved. That's why I love doing the show. I got that off my chest. And it was, I knew going into the show, like, man, something's bugging me. I want to bring up, but I can't remember, and there it is. So thank you, Tan, for bearing with me through that anger fest. <laughs> Yeah, no problem, no problem, man. It's been episode eight, though, Tana. No. It, it has been episode eight. I like Final Fantasy seven. you know, like, this has been an alright episode. Was it as good as seven? Um, I don't know, it might be better. Some people might call it better. There's not a lot of things walking behind your main character, though. It's yeah, not a rehashed Pokemon. Hopefully, <laughs> in this eight, spoiler alert, we're not dead. Like Squall. So... Yeah, the whole time. Yeah. Wow, what, what the fuck? Yeah, I mean, come on. Episode 8? Do you want, wait, yeah, speak, okay, do you want to, just for the sake of episode 8, do you want to do Final Fantasy? Because when the fuck are we going to bring up our opinions of Final Fantasy 8? Because I don't even like it that much at all. You want to do it? Um, we'll have an episode at some, no, no, we'll have an episode at some point. We're, we're doing, we're doing Mario next week. That's what I, we're doing. I just meant right now. I just meant to say request. real quick, like how dumb that was to oh. make Squall dead the whole time. That's where I thought you were. Oh, to make Squall dead the whole time. Yeah. Well, first off, it's dis so disappointing. I, I, I first off, first off, why couldn't my characters just absorb and absorb into my body, like in all the other iterations? 
No, instead, they all have to follow me. They all have to, like, walk slightly off rhythm so that it's just nothing but, it, oh, my God, footsteps. <laughs> now, also, to get, always goes back to footsteps. The fucking footsteps. It's PSX fucking uh, footsteps. Yeah, you know, it was bad enough in Parasite Eve, but now I've got, like, fucking six people stepping. And some weird fucking Balam Garden music playing and fucking weird headmasters, Sid, and everyone all weird and romantic. Oh, God. Eight, you yeah, fucker. Yeah, everything's just weird. Like, eight. Also, you know, like, a lot of people are like, we didn't make, need to make it a summons-based thing. Yeah, you did. That was, it was Pokemon. They took Pokemon. They were like, okay, well, let's <laughs> yeah. like, do, like, a Pokemon thing. We'll have the Bloody summons do most of the fighting. Because that's, that's what it was. That's, that's beautiful. <laughs> that is beautiful you said that, because I was literally thinking about making the Pokemon comparison. Like, exactly, dude. Uh, that fucking game is maybe one of the biggest cock teases. I would say, and the, yeah, some sure of the biggest big waste of time, what the fuck is the point of Laguna? It's awesome, I get it, it's the best part of the <laughs> fucking game, Laguna is awesome, his battle theme is badass, it was great, but what the fuck did I do that for? Like, really? It meant nothing, it's his dad, hey, spoiler alert, it's also his dad. Boom. <laughs> So let's 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 do it. I th I think my anger and my uh, I'm not even drunk and I'm getting this worked up. I am completely sober. Dude, well, the thing was, the thing that got me was I remember I bought that Eight. game as soon as it came out, Ugh. and I mean the fucking intro movie was just amazing. Well, how could like, you? Like I not? even played the when, demo. How I played, could you? Well, I, listen, I played the I, I played the demo. I you know I, I had PS Magazine and I played the demo, and I was like, this demo was awesome. I cannot wait. It was. It felt like a traditional Final Fantasy game. Deception. And then you know the intro, the intro movie plays, and all this stuff. And then all of a sudden, I'm using. I, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it right. Quizzlequaddle. Cipher, however you pronounce it. Cipher and the, the first, and beach or whatever. But 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 I'm talking about like then when you finally get in the combat and they're like, oh yeah, here's your uh, summon. Here's your GF. There you go. Oh yeah, by the way, draw, because if you don't fucking draw in that game, you're fucked, because when the hell was that ever in a Final Fantasy game, Tannen? Draw. Draw fucking ass for you to kiss, Square. That shit sucked. Thank God, Nine was so good. Nine was amazing. I still love Nine. Nine. They came back with went, it, went, it, it went back to its roots. They listened. And a lot of people make fun of me for like a Nine, like, oh, what are you, some half monkey kid? Yeah. Rode it around. I was like, dude, there was it was a beautiful storyline. I mean, the ending of it was heartbreaking. Yeah, this know, guy's like, what are you, um, some half monkey kid? I gotta go watch Dragon Ball Z. Like, really? Yeah, yeah, exactly. We gotta go watch Dragon Ball Z. Also, I mean, you know, like, it, did you you beat Nine, right? I have beaten Nine. I love Nine. I beat it like two or three times. Okay, good, yeah. But spoiler alert, you know, Vivi's dead at the end. Like, wait, we can give us that kind of an ending. Fucking yeah. dicks. Like, you know, they, they definitely, they gave us the, what I like to call the Wonder Years ending on that one. They did. Have you ever watched the last episode of Wonder Years? I you know, where he's just like, in the end, two later, two years later, when dad died. Like, it's what? This is the ending narration. Oh, wait, and, and like, as an adult, you're too, just making me think uh, of Winnie Cooper now. And by the way, shout well, no, out to no, Winnie no, no. Cooper, who's super hot Fuck now. Winnie Cooper. She's got, she got, yeah, well, she's got nothing to do with the last episode other than the fact that they're, like, split up. And I know, but talk. hearing the name, the one year, she was one of my crushes in childhood. You can't Winnie Cooper tease me and then just take it away. Anyway, anyway, the final narration of Final Fantasy IX, Vivi's dead. He's like, yep, I died. What? Like, it was just like the final episode of fucking Wonder Years. Yeah. When Dad died. Wait, wait, wait what? You're going to kill the dad off? Ugh. Like, he's like my favorite character at this point. Kevin's a little bitch. We have no shits about Kevin. Wayne's a dick. Wayne is you a know, dick. You know, like, all I care about is the mom and the dad. Wayne is the cypher. And you're going to kill Dad. Years. That's great. Yeah. Wayne, Wayne is a dick. But remember when his best friend, like, came back from Vietnam and got all naked? <laughs> yes. And, like, Wayne, like... I've seen way home. too much of the Wonder Years. Way too fucking much, man. You know, oh, like, man. well, that we... was kind of proved, though. It was like, it was like wow, Wayne's, Wayne's actually a human being. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell you, we did Episode 8 Justice. We took it home with Wayne's Vietnam serving friend getting naked. <laughs> Final Fantasy 8 sucking some dick because that game is just, ugh. And yeah, 
I think we nailed it, man. Episode 8. Follow us on Twitter. One more time, Tannen. At the Hibiki TMD for me. And at O'Tannon's Bum for the man himself. My friend, my compadre. Once again, thank you for coming on the hey. show. Next week, you're maybe. You're welcome, also. Fingers crossed next week, Tan. What, what do we have up our sleeve for a possible guest? Bring uh, up. Well, we got um, well, Let's just make it a surprise. All right. Um, uh, well, you know, I thought you had a guest lined up, or do I have a guest lined up? I don't one remember. Of, one of us. We're going to talk about it off offline. But one of us do have a guest. Well, I, I've had a guest lined up for a while, but. Um, I've got 50. I, yeah, I've, I've got a few too. You, know, you, you guys just love sw- want to participate, which is everyone, nice. I love everyone it. can't also, wait to come on the reset button. We appreciate it. So we'll definitely also, hey, uh, collab hey, with any to, other podcast. To those, to those listening, and anytime we bitch about a game, um, no Final Fantasy 8 suggestions. Okay? This is yep, just I, a dog. I, I wouldn't do I, I will, wouldn't I, I, I will, it. I won't do it. I just won't do it. First of all, just wanted to throw that out there. How many <laughs> fucking discs? Four discs? Three discs? I'm not doing it. Fuck that. Nope. I thought it was like six or something. That was ridiculous. Yeah. Just ridiculous. Pretty sure no, no, one disc was just fucking was cutscenes. Three. Yeah. Well, one, di- one disc of Final Fantasy VII was really cutscenes. That final cutscene was really what the last disc was. <laughs> I thought you were going to go a totally different route and be like, well, guys, if we shit on a game and you like it, we apologize, we respect No, but you're just like, well, you know what? We won't even address it if you request this. So fuck you. <laughs> it's basically what- I'll address it. I'll address it and be like, what the fuck are you thinking? Yeah. <sighs> you know. Well, I know what I'm thinking. I'm thinking it's time to hit that reset button, my friend. I think it is, too. Oh, by, by the way, we're just real quick, though. If any of you know of a shittier Final Fantasy game other than 8 and nobody be a smartass and say 9, um, make sure to put that in the suggestions. I'll, I'll try to play the shittier one and then argue as to why that's not as shitty as Final Fantasy. I wasn't a big fan of 5. But like, the legit 5, not the... Uh... Not the, G, the, not the DS remake? The one that was two over here for the SNES. I'm not a big fan. I think it's very, very yeah. boring. That, that was the one where you were you were, uh, you were the, the knight, right? Yes. And you had the twins at one point. Yeah, you start off on the airship. And they turn the screen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dude, 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 dude. The, the DS version is amazing. I never played that one. I should. I have it. I should check it out. Anyway, well, let's hit the reset uh, button. Till next week, Tannen. Hey guys, Travis here from Abiki TMD, reminding you as always to follow me on Twitter at the Hibiki TMD. Check out the reset button podcast with myself and Tannen, Hibiki Quickie, Hibiki History, Retrospectives, everything in between, retro gaming and pro wrestling, not to mention my other podcast with the man himself, Michael. Hey you dirty fucking pigs, this is Mike from the Slam Pigs Podcast reminding you to check us out on Twitter at the Slam Pigs Podcast or check me out on Twitter at Mike the Slam Pig. Or Travis, where can they find that other show? They can find everything in between right here on Hibiki TMD. I don't really think they're dirty fucking pigs.